Hi, my name is Shane Healy, and I'm here with my brother, Quinn Healy. As a quick refresher, we are the co-founders of KUKI, which stands for Chicago Ukraine Kinship Initiative. KUKI was formed to help Ukrainian children refugees better transition to life in the United States. Quinn, do you want to touch base on the reasoning behind this interview series, please? Hi, guys. I'm Quinn. So we are creating an interview series with the purpose of educating people around the world of the ramifications of the Russian invasion and how it is tearing apart the fabric of Ukrainian life. We interview young refugees, but the scope is much wider than that as it impacts all Ukrainian people. Recall in our first interview, we interviewed Dasha and Maria, brave young ladies who both fled Ukraine to refuge in Slovakia. Shane, back to you. Okay, so today we want to introduce you to two more young ladies who have been through it all. 16-year-old Catherine and 15-year-old Natalie, who happen to be great childhood friends and come from the same town of Vassal Kiev, Ukraine, which is about a 30-minute drive southwest of Kiev. Catherine, let's start with you. First off, welcome and thanks for your courage to step up and participate in this interview. You had mentioned that your family initially didn't think the invasion was going to happen. Can you elaborate on that, please? Yeah, like the whole world started to speak about the wars that's going to happen, but none of us, none of Ukrainians would think that it will happen because, you know, Russia and Ukraine were friends for a long time. We thought we were friends for a long time, but unfortunately it happened and everyone is shocked. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, also, Catherine, can you please talk about what happened on the morning of February 24th? That sounded like no joking matter, right? Yeah, it was horrible. I woke up because of missiles that were falling in my town. Uh, the sky was red and uh, everything was shaking. My house was shaking. And my, all my family were nervous. We didn't know what to do. We didn't know where to hide. So. Yeah, it was like alarming for us. Um, given that scary situation, what, what did your family ultimately decide to do? My dad was shocked and he phoned to his friends, the two, uh, military men, and they said us to leave the Vassal Kiev because there are lots of uh, military fields and airdromes. So we take all uh, warm clothes that we need because it was winter and it was pretty cold and we go out of Vasarki. And where did you end up going? We Outside. came to the, to the village near our hometown. Uh, we stayed in a small ancient house that was built before the first, first World War. Uh, it was freezing there and um, it's like tiny house and we slept there in our clothes to not to get freezing. And did you feel any safer there or were you still feeling very scared those two nights? Uh, it was still scary because we not we were not far from all what was happening in Vassal Kiev. Uh, like military pl planes were flying over our overhead and we weren't sleeping for nights. We were like, shaking. It was pretty hard. Mm -hmm. I'm sure this must have been so incredibly difficult for you, but then your dad and uncle had to leave your family? Yeah, my dad and my uncle are military men in the post. And when the war started, they understand that they need to protect our motherland. So 25th February, they come back to army. It was horrible days when they just leave because the situation was became worse and worse. And I was scared that they can be killed, that they will never come back. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you and your family decided to leave this ancient house and head to Vinyak. Can you describe that experience? Yeah. Uh, when we understand that we need to go further from Vassal Kiev, we moved to Vinita. It's a city on the south of Ukraine. Um, the road was horrible and yeah. And like, what, 
how long did it end up taking you to get there? And how long does it normally take, you know? Normally it takes four hours from like Vasily Cave to Vinita, but uh, there were huge amounts of cars trying to escape from the war that uh, trying to became safe and it take us 14 hours. Wow. Everyone was exhausted. My mom was exhausted. She's not a good driver. My sister was exhausted and, but have, luckily we came there. Okay. So right now in this current state, do you think you're in a much safer situation? Yeah, luckily I'm in much safer situation because like no planes there, no explosions. Uh, I can sleep there without any problems. I cannot be scared that missiles will follow uh, my house. Uh, we live there for free in a stranger's house because they just like let us live there. And I'm happy that they help us. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess there is a silver lining in this evacuation for you. You received a really nice surprise at one point, right? Yeah. Uh, one week ago, my dad came to me and my sister. It was a surprise for us. They planned it with my mom. And I think it was the best day of my life because uh, I have no idea when I'll meet him again. And when he came, I was hugging him and can't uh, leave uh, let him get uh, let him go so I was crying and it was like pretty touching mm -hmm. oh I can tell thanks so much for sharing these difficult moments Catherine now let me hand this over to Quinn to get Natalie's story likewise Natalie thanks for coming on and sharing your powerful story can you talk about that first day of the invasion yeah I woke up at 4 a.m uh, on 24 uh, February, firstly, I saw that it was like a hurricane or thunder band, but when I understood that it was like explosion, I ran to my parents' room, start to scream, uh, and because I didn't understand what is going, what was going on, my mom was shocked too, and she was scared too, but my dad was the most passive like person in our house. He said that it was just a joke, or maybe like everything except the war. Wow. There must have been a lot of confusion with you and your family as you guys thought it was a hurricane. So how did you guys ultimately deal with that? Yes, there were a lot of confusion because we didn't understand what should we do. My dad said that, uh, okay, we will wait like for news and that's all. After that, like our friends, our family friends came to us because my house is located in more or safety, more or less like safety zone. So we spent uh, in our house like maybe three weeks. Uh, first three days we spent in a bathroom and then we moved to basement and spent there maybe two weeks. Yeah. So staying at your home was not the solution at that point? Yeah, we decided to go to the pond because we have a preposition and, but we have like, uh, we had a lot of hesitation because we didn't want to left our mans like my dad and my brother, but, and we were scared about situation it was in which we can, uh, in which we can uh, uh, meet with the Russians. So uh, like on our way, but hopefully, we were in Poland after 41 hours and it was like a safe road. So now you're in Poland and how do you handle schooling while living in such a foreign country? It's like, um, it's difficult because I don't know a language, but hopefully in school we have uh, Polish courses for Ukrainians and now I'm studying Polish. And one more difficult that I have like to education in school, uh, in offline in Poland school and online in Ukrainian. I have also Zoom lessons, but I don't visit them. I just do homework and that's so. all. Hmm. And your father, where is he at now? My father now uh, left in our house with my brother because they're too old to leave the country and they will protect country if someone asks them. Okay, so 
let's go back to the present day. So we're hearing all sorts of stories about innocent lives being lost and the sheer brutality in the media. Catherine, do you mind sharing some of those difficult things you've been hearing about or things that you've witnessed? Yeah, uh, now believe is my cousin and her friends uh, had to live in Bucha. It's now like it's horrible place. They left it, uh, their flat 24th February. And some days ago, they come back to their flat and they recognize that uh, some of jewelries and clothes and uh, trainers disappeared. Russian break into their flat and take it all. And they had broke, had broke their bed and shoot in their TV because they cannot take it with them. So it's a horrible story. They send us some photos and it's like, like. You also mentioned that at one point you saw a video of dead bodies. Can you articulate on that a little bit? Uh, when the war started, some of people uh, were hiding in our school cellar, uh, but some Russian soldiers tried to attack them to kill. Luckily, our military men uh, were there to protect, so uh, all uh, people are in safe, they are alive. Um, unfortunately, some of our military men, some of our protectors are died. So, uh, there are a lot of blood in our school and it's hard for us to see the video of it and to understand that we need to come back to our school and to continue studying there when such horrible situation uh, happened there. Mm -hmm. And Natalie, likewise, can you talk about some of the atrocities that you heard about in Lucha? Yes, I have uh, heard about of many rapes all over Ukraine, like poor women, men, even men and children. Also, my friend's father, uh, who lives in Vasilkiv too, like me, uh, got a shot in uh, the stomach, but luckily it got stuck in his bulletproof vest, so now he alive. He survived. So. Wow. So, as we finish up here, Natalie, what is your hope for moving forward? I hope that I'll be back to Ukraine as soon as possible, maybe in June or May, uh, to visit my to uh, meet with my family and friends. Like as soon as possible, I hope to be back in Ukraine. <laughs> yeah, and Catherine, what is your hope for the future? I hope that I can come back to my flat, to my hometown, and continue my ordinary life to go to school to like to vi to visit university and to leave this whole my family that my dad will come back and everything will be cool um is there anything that either of you two would like to share Catherine you first honestly yesterday uh, became very sad situation in Ukraine after our call in Odessa, it's in the south of Ukraine, a uh, missile um, fall in a house and there died three people, old woman and mom and her three months daughter. Uh, it was just three months kid and it's like, it's horrible because Russians say on the news that they shoot only military fields and air drums but kids are dying, and I hope that this war will finish mm -hmm. as soon as possible. Sorry to hear that. And how about you, Natalie? I'm just believe that we will have a peace in Ukraine, and like we will have the victory because we we should because it's a terrible situation. I'm just hoping for the peace in all like world. Natalie and Catherine. You both have been great friends for a long time, and I'm sure you never thought you would have to experience something like this. Quinn and I wanted to say thank you for your honesty and willingness to share your heartfelt stories with us. Your courage is spurring other people to get involved with this cause. We sincerely wish you the best of luck with this difficult situation and be aware that you can have friends and 
the U.S. and all around the world who stand in solidarity with you. And of course, if you ever make it to Chicago, we would love to host you and show you around our Ukrainian village neighborhood. All the best. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.